Hi friends, my name is Bill Evertsburg. I'm one of the ministers at the Kenilworth Union Church and this is Doogie, my assistant minister. And Doogie has invited one of his friends over for a play day today. This is Bear. Bear is a Bernese Mountain Dog and belongs to Dirk and Caroline Degenars from our church. You know the Degenars. And Bear is here to tell, help me tell a story about a Bernese Mountain Dog in Washington, D.C. This is my daughter, Taylor, by the way, who just moved to Chicago from Washington, D.C. And this story happened in Washington, D.C. in early May. The story was told by a reporter named Ellen McCarthy in the Washington Post on June 23. And this is day 116 of my personal quarantine. And in those 116 days, this is my all-time favorite story. This is about Finn the Bernese Mountain Dog. Uh, Finn is the same kind of dog that Bear is. I wish he'd stay in this frame so he could help me tell this story, but at least you got to, to meet Bear. So the story of Finn the Mountain Dog begins three years ago when Finn ends up in an animal shelter at the age of eight weeks. He was abandoned by his first owner. And so the animal shelter called a Washington resident named Debbie Blaney because Debbie's uh, Bernie's Mountain Dog had recently died. And Debbie was happy to adopt Finn, even though, if we're honest about it, Finn, the Bernese Mountain Dog, had some issues. Finn was both shy and needy, which is not a great combination for a giant dog like this. And so he was shy, he didn't trust strangers, he would never let you come close to him if he didn't know who you were. But if you lived in his house, if he trusted you, he was a little bit clingy. And so if two people in Finn's house were hugging, Finn would try to wedge himself between them so that he could get in on some of that action. And so on May 3, earlier this year, it was a Sunday, Debbie took Finn for a walk in the woods in her Washington neighborhood. And he was usually trustworthy. She usually let him off the leash. But when she did, she looked away for just a second and suddenly Finn was just gone. No sign of Finn. She called his name for hours until the wind got too loud for uh, her to be heard by Finn. And then Debbie went home Sunday evening. She went right home and got busy. She made hundreds of posters that she plastered every tree and telephone pole in her neighborhood with. She got on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. She visited the local neighborhood website. She emailed her friends and her neighbors. And so on Monday morning, 20 people showed up to look for this lost dog. They looked for hours, but they had no sign of Finn. One of the guys who showed up to look for Finn was David McGee. David McGee taught second grade at the Horace Mann Elementary School in Washington. He had 22 second graders. They called themselves the Woodpeckers. And so this is May 3, earlier this year. Of course, all of those students are going to school on Zoom. And Mr. McGee sends them an email saying, Woodpeckers, I could really use your help with something. And so if you had taken a walk in those woods in that Washington neighborhood the first week in May earlier this year, you would have seen several seven-year-olds walking around scouring the woods for this lost dog with a leash in one hand and dog biscuits in the other. Every one of those 22 second graders wanted to be the hero that found this lost dog. So on Monday, 20 people show up to look for Finn. On Tuesday, 40 people show up to look for Finn. Still no luck. Debbie Blaney is a wreck. She's not eating or sleeping. She's worried that Finn was kidnapped or maybe fell into a deep hole somewhere and couldn't get out. So Tuesday, there are 40 people. It doesn't work. On Wednesday, they add a search and rescue dog uh, and they teach this dog uh, Finn's scent. Still no luck. So on Thursday, they add a professional, get this, a professional lost dog, dog finder. I didn't even know such people existed. So he sets up a motion detector in the woods in that neighborhood, and he sets up a trap cage. This is Thursday, still no fin. Debbie Blaney is still a wreck, still beside herself, still not, still not eating and sleeping. And so finally, on Saturday, the sixth day, Debbie Blaney's phone vibrates and it's a text from a total stranger. Is this your dog? Reads the text. And attached is a blurry photo of an animal. Debbie races to where the woman says this photo was taken. Still no fin. And then finally on the seventh day, on Sunday, 
Mother's Day. Another total stranger contacts Debbie and says, I've seen your dog. And Debbie races over to where this woman is, and sure enough, there's Finn. He is dirty and hungry and tired. His fur is matted with burrs and twigs, but that doesn't dampen the reunion between Debbie Blaney and Finn. Hi, Finn Finn, she says. Now, David McGee, that second grade teacher, says, it was a great lesson in hope for my little kids. But not only hope, right? A lesson in solidarity and compassion. Because all of these people, friends, strangers, neighbors, second graders, professionals, all these people left their lonely bubbles of quarantine to unite in this common purpose. One of the persons who was looking for Finn for those six days says, thank you, Finn, for giving us a common purpose and giving us a reason to talk to each other. And I thought it was such a beautiful, simple, vestigial reaction to a fundamental problem. A dog is lost. This dog has to be found. And he was. And that's the story of Finn the Bernese Mountain Dog, just like Bear here. And it, you know what? It, it reminded me of Jesus' famous parable. Which of you, he asks, which of you, having 100 sheep and one gets lost, wouldn't leave the 99 behind to search for the single lost lamb or the lost Bernese mountain dog. That story made me so happy I wanted to share it with you. I hope it makes you happy too. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.